Hey folks, in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can upload files from a Next.js application to Google Cloud Storage. And the two ways that I'll show in this video is using a server action and using an API route. I'm going to start with the server action, and I have a simple Next.js application that I just started here. And I also have a storage bucket in Google Cloud. And this is the bucket where I want to upload our files. And in our application, I have a page where we're going to use a server action to upload this. And I have a very simple form that's just a file picker and then an upload button. Here's the component for that, which is just a form. And in this form, I have an input and the type is file and the name is file. And that's important because we're going to need to reference that in our server action in a little bit. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a server action that we can post our data to directly from this form. I do want to preface this video by saying that I am not a Next.js expert. I was just doing some of this stuff in a side project and thought it was pretty interesting. If I'm doing something wrong, please let me know in the comments down below. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create that server action. So in my source folder, I'm just going to create a new file and I'm going to put it in a lib folder and I'm just going to call it actions.ts. Since this will be for server actions, we want to make sure that we have use server at the top of this file. And then I'm going to export a upload file method that's async and it's going to accept form data. And the reason I'm accepting form data is because we're going to use the action on the form to post directly to this server action. The first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to grab the file out of that form data. And I'm doing that by calling form.git and then I'm passing the name of that input control for the file, which was called file. And I'm just going to cast it as a file object. And then I'm going to add a little bit of validation. This is optional and you can do whatever type of validation you want on these files for your application. But I'm going to make sure that the file is not null and also that it is not empty. Now that we have the file, we need to upload it to cloud storage. And I'm going to use the Node.js component library provided by Google to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and install that. So I've opened up my integrated terminal here in VS Code. And the command for that is npm install at google-cloud slash storage. And then once that's installed, we can go ahead and we can import that. And to do that, it's import storage from at Google Cloud slash storage. Next, we'll create a new storage object. And to do that, we say const storage equals new storage. And then we can upload our file to our bucket. I'm going to await storage dot bucket, and then you give it your bucket name, and then dot file, and you give it the file name, which is file.name, and then you call save and you pass in the file. There's a few different options on how you can do that, but the way that I'm going to do it is by using the buffer. In order to do that, I need to add one more line right up here above to get that buffer from the file. So I'll say const buffer equals await, and then file dot array buffer. And then in our save, we're going to say buffer.from and then pass in that buffer. And that's all we have to do to upload files into our bucket. One thing I have done behind the scenes is I have logged into the Google Cloud CLI on this computer as myself. And the reason you do that is when you use this storage object here and, the, and pretty much any other object from the Google Cloud client libraries is it will look for the application default credentials. And I'll put a link to this in the description down below, but this is the documentation from Google on how to set this up. But a really quick summary when you're doing local development is you need to make sure you have the Google Cloud CLI installed. And then once you install it, you need to log in as yourself. And assuming that you have permissions on the bucket to read and write files, this will work for you. But assuming that you're logged in, when you do this storage, it's going to look for those default credentials and it's going to use those to run this command. Now let's go into our form and we'll hook up this server action so we can actually use it and then we'll test it. On our form, what we want to do is we want to add an action. So I'm going to say action and I'm going to pass in the name of the server action that we've created. And I'll go ahead and I'll import that from our library and that's it. So if we save this, now we can go run it and we can test it. Here's that upload action page. I'm going to go ahead and say choose file. I'll grab my thumbnail logo and I will click upload. And I didn't do anything on my form here to hide anything or show that it was successful. But if we go into the bucket here and we refresh this, but you can see that that file has now been uploaded into our bucket. And the little bit of testing that I've done, these server actions is a really simple and quick way to upload these files. However, there is one caveat and that has to do with the size of the body that can be posted to a server action. I'll put a link to this down below, but right now Next has a default limit of one megabyte on those server actions. You can, of course, change this to be any size that you want, but they do recommend keeping it pretty small. I actually did some testing with the way that I just showed how to do this, and I can upload files that are larger than one megabyte, and it's still working for me. And I'll show what I mean by that. So if I show my network tab, and I choose a different file that's large, so for example, here's a three megabyte file, and I upload that, you can see it succeeded. And if I go into my bucket and I refresh, 
there's that image I just uploaded. I'm not really sure why that succeeded because one megabyte's the default and it still went up. That's a three megabyte file. In the network tab, you can see that that was posted. It was only a size of 454 bytes. And so I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it's chunking the data and that's why it's still working. Let me know down in the comments below if you know why. And now I'll show you the second way of doing this, which is an API route. I'm gonna go ahead and do this in a new page. So I will create a new file in the new folder called upload API and I'll create the page.tsx. And for now, I'm just going to paste in everything we did in the other form. I'm going to remove the action right here. And I'll just leave that form the way it is. Now we'll come back and make changes for it for the API, but I'm going to go ahead and go create that API route. And in my app folder, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file and I'm going to put it in an API folder and then a folder called upload and it's going to be route.ts. And what we want to do now is we want to create a post endpoint that we can post our form data to. And then that API route can handle uploading the file into Google Cloud Storage. I'm going to export an async function called post. And similar to how we did it with the server action where we posted the entire form, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to post the entire form data. The other option is you could post it as a JSON object. So it really just depends on your use case and how you would prefer to do this. But I'm just going to say const form equals await request.form data. And this is going to give us the form data from that request object. And then now everything is the exact same as how we did it in the server action file. So we just need to get the file from the form data and then upload that into Google Cloud Storage. And this is where my knowledge of Next.js is a little bit short. So I'd love to hear your comments down below on how you would do this. But there's two ways I thought of doing this. And one is you can just duplicate the code from the server action. Or the other way is just calling the server action. I don't know if there's any reason to not call that server action from an API route like this because they're both being handled on the server. So it's just another function call essentially. If you know why that's a good or bad thing, let me know why below. But I'll go ahead and I'll show you both ways. Um, so first I'll just use the server action. So I'll just say await upload file and I'll import that from my actions. And then I'll just pass in the form and that's it. That's all we have to do. Because the form is in the exact same shape and has the same names as the form that we used for the server action, this form is going to work just fine. And then you can return whatever response you want to return from your API endpoint. For now, I'm just going to say success is true. Let's go up in our form to use this and then I'll modify this so we're not using the server action. On the form, we're going to add an action. And this action is what endpoint to call. In our case, that's just API slash upload. And we want the method of this to be a post. And there's one very important piece, and this is a piece that I missed when I was testing, but because that form data has the file object in it, you need to make sure this form is encoded in the correct way. So if you add encoding type, this needs to be multi-part slash form dash data. If you don't have this encoding type on here, at least from my testing before, that form data won't have the correct object in it for the file. Now let's go ahead and let's test this. I'm going to go back into my bucket. I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything out of here. And then in my app, I'm going to go to my upload API page. And just like before, I'll go ahead and I'll choose a file and I will upload that. It actually does redirect me to that page. So it says success is true. Let's go into our bucket and refresh and see if it's there. And there's our file. So that does work. And back in our route, back in the API route, I'm just calling the server action. So if it's not a good idea to do this, what you could do is you could take all this logic that actually uploads the file and you could put that into a separate file that is only for talking to Google Cloud Storage. So for example, I could say a new file in my lib folder and I can just call it storage.ts. And then in this file, you could export a const and you could just call it upload to GCS, for example. And then you could pass in that file object into here. And then from here, you could strip out all of this, make sure that the method is async. And then in the server action, you would just use that instead. So await upload GCS and then pass in that file and it's doing the same thing. And then back in our route, we just changed this to use basically the same logic. So we're going to go ahead and get the file from the form data. And then we'll just say await upload to GCS and we'll pass in the file. And then you can get the success response from that and pass that back in your response. I hope that was helpful. Like I said, I'm not an expert. There's some stuff here that I'm not sure if it's the best way of doing it or not. So let me know in the comments down below what you think. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.